Hello, I'd like to greet you all to this new lecture on embedded systems. Uh, this is a lecture that I've taken to help you guys uh, try to walk through my lecture notes uh, to give you an in-depth analysis of uh, the documentation that I've, I've actually uh, compiled so as to help you study through the document and to just get you going. Okay, so now this is an introduction to my controllers, stock microprocessors, and um, as you can see, uh, right now, uh, we're going to try to see if we can uh, check on some new things uh, that we want to look at. So real quickly, we just uh, put it, put the windows in a broader view, uh, in full screen mode. Right, there we are. All right, so these are the things that we'll talk about. We'll try to look at uh, introduction to the Mac controllers. Now, I want to mention that this course, though, it's mentioning microprocessors, uh, though this course is meant to capture microcontrollers. And very soon you will see the difference between the microprocessors and the and the Mac controllers, but the outline of what we can talk about is what you see right here. All right. Now let's start to to go through some of the stuff that we need so that we are actually on the same page. Okay. All right. Now, what is the structure? Now, so if I come to this very introduction, I want to just make you guys appreciate that um, microcontrollers have only been with us for a few decades. All right. And that the impact of these Mac controllers on our lives is really quite profound. Uh, usually these are supposed to be just data pros processors performing exhaustive uh, numeric operations, but their presence is unnoticed uh, at most of the places, like you can see the micro uh the presence is actually unnoticed in, um, in things like uh, elevator systems, uh, you can see that we can use microcontrollers actually in uh, also traffic light systems and you, even in modern vehicles um, they use uh, these microcontrollers. Okay. Now I'm just trying to highlight here that what makes most of these devices smart is, is actually the microcontrollers themselves. Now, what is the structure of the microcontroller and the microprocessors? Because we are using these terms interchangeably, the microcontroller and actually the microprocessor. Now, if I look at the microprocessor, now the microprocessor is simply the CPU or the central processing unit. Now, I need you guys to understand that we have a microprocessor and then we have also the microcontroller structure. But now if you look at the microprocessor itself, it's actually the CPU, all right, the central processing unit. Now, when you talk about the central processing unit, just real quickly, we can then choose to highlight what exactly we are dealing with right here. Now, um, if we look at the CPU, the CPU actually contains these are the components that you see that are found in there. And we're going to have a discussion on some of the structures or some of the things that, that we would like to um, uh, discuss. All right, we know that <coughs> a microprocessor is simply an IC, an inter, an IC or an integrated uh, a circuit that contains most of the function of the central processing unit. But what exactly is this central processing unit and what does it have inside? And as you can see here, we've got the instruction register. 
Now this instruction register is actually used to um, the instruction register. This is the one that you see right here. The instruction register is it holds the binary for each instruction as it is executed. Now you need I'll, I'll make you understand in, in a bit more. Uh, so it holds the binary for the instruction that is to be executed. Now that is very uh, easy to understand and I'll explain in detail. So inside the CPU we have also the program counter. Now what does the program counter uh, do? The program counter holds the memory address of the next instruction to be executed. Now you think of a program counter as a pointer. So look, we have memory where we store the, these instructions and then we have actually the CPU itself. So the program counter will actually point to the next instruction that needs to be uh, executed uh, that is in the uh, program uh, memory or the program memory. In this case, I'll show you later on that the program memory that we're referring to is actually a flash memory because that's where uh, your written code is, is stored. Now we have also the instruction register now that actually just holds the binary for each instruction as it is executed. And then we also have the instruction or decoder or control unit. Now this is the unit that now decides or once this guy holds the instruction uh, for uh, once it holds the instruction for that needs to be done, uh, that needs to be worked on, it is then the information is then passed to the uh, decoder. Now the decoder now decodes what this instruction is and it's actually connected to various units. For example, like the arithmetic logic unit uh, for processing of the uh, data or something like that, depending on the interpretation that it gets on the binary code that is going to be held uh, by this. Now you need to understand, guys, that the instructions um, are written and whenever they are written, the microcontroller or the microprocessor, sorry, will have to point, the program counter will have to point to that memory address. And once that memory address has been pointed to, uh, then it is fetched by the instruction uh, register, which again, the instruction register holds the binary of that. And then the decoder or control unit makes out what the instruction is all about. So determines the operation to perform and sets in motion the necessary action to perform. So this is done by the uh, by this um, uh, instructional decoder unit. Now within the microprocessor structure, we have also what we call the arithmetic and logic unit. Now the arithmetic and logic unit, this is the one that performs all mathematical computations within the microprocessor itself, right? And then we have also what we call the temporal a re register and we have a detailed discussion of these registers because these are the registers that are found within the CPU itself or the microprocessor structure. Now you can think of these as the, the memory uh, storage units, the short memory storage units within uh, the CPU itself. Notice that I'm saying it's the microprocessor and these are the things that the microprocessor contains. All right, and so real quickly we can try and move forward. Okay. All right, so now if we look at the microprocessor structure itself, so we said that the microprocessor has got the CPU. Now, if you look at the CPU here, this is what the microprocessor has, and this is a reference to what we have here, right? This is what the microprocessor has, and then we have an example of the ZAET uh, type of microprocessor. Now, it's very much important here to explain that microprocessors got the basic components that I just showed you. Uh, that are found within itself, but should the microprocessor want to do extra things like store large information or data, then there must be a memory unit that is externally mapped 
to the mac to the mac processor, for example, like the memory unit could be externally mapped. The big while well, we store big chunks of data, this is actually externally mapped. And also we may have things like the input output devices. Now the input output devices again, these are your eyes of them. These are the eyes of the macro processor. Now apparently when we talk about this processor itself or the central processing unit doesn't have these things inside but they are actually externally mapped uh, to the CPU itself okay now we have the Z80 for example 8-bit and 16-bit address now we'll talk about this now what it means here is that we have what we call the um, the address buses in this case they are now we have the address buses and we have the data buses in this case that are being shown that the microprocessor would actually fetch the address of a particular memory location or of a particular input output devices through the address buses in this case. And then the data buses of course would be used to fetch data that is needed are for the microprocessor to work on. Now remember that the microprocessor mainly contains things like the decoders, uh, the uh, program counters, the instruction registers, uh, as well as the arithmetic logic unit now for the purpose of working on the data. But of course the internal registers for storage, for temporal storage to work on the data that needs to be worked on. But whenever we need to access large chunks of information, um, we may have to externally map our CPU to an external memory unit. Now in this case of course we have the memory unit and we also have the input output devices now these are the ones they were like ports of a microprocessor now these are equally uh, mapped in this case externally so now this is why i'm saying that the microprocessor structure cpu is actually externally mapped now and of course here you can see that according to the z80 it has got the 8-bit data bus and now a data bus guys will have detailed in this discussion about these data buses because what these are these are simply um, uh, buses or you could think of channels uh, through which data is actually passed to and from the memory locations uh, in this case the memory this itself and the input output devices is passed to and from to the CPU and actually also we have the address passes and the function of the address pass is actually to um, hold the, uh, the 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 hold the address of the um, of the memory location that is needed uh, to uh, to be worked on because we, the idea here is that there is a memory location and in this memory location we've got chunks of memory now guys we'll have a detailed discussion on these chunks of sub memories that are found within a memory location and these sub chunks of memory locations are actually found at a particular uh, address and for the CPU to actually wake on the data that is found in these memory locations that are found on these uh, particular addresses there's need for an address bus to help us locate what exactly is the location there's need for the uh, location or there's need for the house number or the address of that particular memory location to be able to work on so the address bus actually is used to actually pinpoint which address, which memory location are we dealing with for the purpose of channeling the data through the data bus uh, to the CPU. So how we did your discussion of that. Now right now here real quickly I just want to talk about the instruction sequence flow. Uh, now how does the instruction uh, really uh, work uh, in the Mac control. Now here is the point that you need to actually just get real quickly right here. Now I can see here when we talk about the instruction cycle now there's a detailed I'm hoping to release uh, actually a specific uh, uh, sort of uh, video that would would really drive a point home uh, on this uh, yeah, fetch decode cycle but right now I just want you guys to understand that the way a microprocessor works is that first of all there is always what we call the fetch um, uh, instruction okay or so to speak how do the instructions get executed this is called the instruction cycle right how do we 
execute sort of an instruction what is the procedure and what is the methodology right so first of all uh, there must be an instruction should actually be fetched all right now once the instruction has been fetched the instruction should be then decoded and once the instruction has been decoded the instruction is actually executed okay and once the instruction has been executed the cycle may actually repeat uh, for fetching and then for decoding and then execution it's just some sort of uh, a cycle that takes place but right now you have to understand that what involves in the fetching so in the fetching it's where we have now the control unit gate next instruction from memory now when we talk about the control unit that gets instruction from memory guys of course I did mention that we do have what we call the program counter right so the program counter will point the PC will point because the microprocessor does not have uh, so to speak um, Okay, so the PC, the program counter, is found within a microprocessor. So what this guy does, he points the next address that needs to be worked on in terms of the instructions. Now remember, these instructions are actually found in a file of memory, which is, in this case, I'll show you, it's called the program memory. Program memory. And each instruction is found in lines like this. Right, so for read to be worked on, uh, the program counter points to the memory location, uh, it points to the instruction that needs to be worked on. And now, once that instruction has been pointed to, I told you there is an instruction called the inst there is a register called an instruction register. Now, this holds uh, the code the binary code of the instruction that needs to be worked on. So now the fetching will involve uh, pointing the, the program counter pointing to the uh, the instruction that needs to be worked on and once that has been pointed to then the instruction register now will hold the binary code of what is the content of that rate that particular uh, instruction so it'll hold the content of the particular instruction and the binary code for that particular instruction and then now that instruction will be passed to the uh, the decoder okay the decoder which is uh, which in this case will have will, will decide what that instruction is and what that what action that needs to be performed on that instruction so right now we have the fetch which control unit gets the instruction from memory and then we have the decode control unit figures out what the instruction is now we have what we call the execute now the execution part involves the control unit carries out the instruction by transferring the data to and from appropriate places possibly specifying the arithmetic logic unit or possibly involving the input output uh, hardware so now we know that uh, the instruction that is being received and once the decoder actually decides on what really needs to be worked on uh, in terms of the instruction what is the instruction saying because the instruction register will just hold the binary code it does not interpret what needs to be worked on on the on the on that um, uh, data on the binary code. This guy, the program counter, just points to the uh, uh, the address, but then the instruction register now holds what is in that address, and then the decoder now will figure out what needs to be done uh, with uh, what has been held in the instruction register. And then, for, for example, the, the execution part will involve that the control unit or the decoder will transfer the data from a, from data to and from a private process, possibly specifying maybe the arithmetic logic unit operations, or it may not just necessarily mean the arithmetic operations. It could be just something to do with maybe holding the data in some input output uh, hardware. So we'll have a detailed discussion again on some of the uh, when I release uh, my next video on, on the same. All right. So real quickly, let's just try to see if we can also make some more progress all right so just gonna remove this 
of stuff that we want to have. Okay. So we've mentioned that a microprocessor is externally mapped to things like memories as well as the input-output devices. Now we talked about the instruction uh, cycle, all right? Now let's look at the structure of a microcontroller. Now that we mentioned that the microcontroller, the microprocessor is just simply uh, the CPU. Now the function, the microprocessor is simply an ICU that contains most of the functions of the central processing unit. Now what are these program counter, instruction registers, uh, arithmetic logic unit, you understand right? But then now what then is a microcontroller? So this is the reason why uh, we are doing this. Alright, so now when we talk about a microcontroller itself, what we are actually saying is this we're saying that it's a digital computer having microprocessor now you can see once we talking about the microprocessor it is this guy right here right as the cpu as the cpu along with the input output devices and memory okay and memory is also known as a micro computer now a digital computer having a microprocessor as the CPU along with the input of the devices and memory is also known as a microcomputer. Now you can think of a microcontroller as really a microcomputer because now what we're saying in this theory of microprocessors is that look we what we're really saying here is that uh, I have a CPU and in the past we say that the CPU and the the CPU was externally mapped to the memory units as well as the the other unit which is the input output devices now what we're trying to do with the mic controller is that we're trying to get everything under one roof in one chip this should be just one chip that controls, that puts everything in that. I don't need to have the CPU alone, and I don't need to have the memory alone. I don't need to have the input output devices alone. But I just want to have all of these guys, that is the chip, the, the memory, the input output devices, for example. And I want to put them all under one unit. And that under one unit now becomes your microcontroller right now what does it have so you can see here that we have what we call the address bus the function of the address bus is to locate or to give uh, the address location of uh, the concerned cell in memory that needs to be worked on and the data bus is simply to uh, carry out uh, the data that um, once we identify the particular address that needs to be worked on, then we need to basically uh, make sure that we carry the data from that particular memory that we have. So this can only be done to the location of which memory cell to work with. Now I'm saying memory cell because the memory unit is so big and it is divided into memory cells and these memory cells are, can be found at particular locations and those locations are addresses. Now I'll have a detailed discussion on memory later on but right now suffice to say that you have the address bus which actually locates the cell, which locates the particular cell to be worked were on and then we have the data buses who these carry the data actually from the cells uh, to the CPU or from the CPU to uh, those uh, particular memory locations. Now we also have the control buses. Now the control buses are very very much important guys because what the control buses do they actually control the execution of um, 
uh, instructions within the marker processor. Now, here is a point, and uh, for example, the marker processor, as you can see, could be externally mapped to things like the ROMs, uh, the RAMs, and the interfacing securely, and maybe the peripherals. Now, in this case, we're saying these are the input output devices. Now, the issues here that could be why would you need the control buses? Because then the control buses. These actually issue control instructions. For example, one of the control instructions that could be issued could be to do with whether we are trying to read uh, from a memory location, for example, uh, uh, whether we are trying to write to a memory lo lo uh, 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 location. So now once the, uh, the decoder has figured out what kind of uh, uh, data uh, that needs to be worked on, then instructions to the control buses could actually be uh, issued. Now that instruction could lead to whether we need to write the data to the mem a particular memory unit or whether we need to read from a particular memory unit. So those are things that could possibly work under the control buses. Now another very important thing right here to note about the control buses is also things like maybe the chip select. Right, because look, there's a ROM, the RAM, and the interface. Which one do we work with at a particular time? So the CPU, there must be an instruction depending on what uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, binary uh, uh, instruction that has been received through the instruction register and decoded. There must be some sort of um, um, control bus to really determine which chip to work with. Is it the ROM at a particular time or the RAM or the, the peripherals? So depending on the instruction, then the control buses would, would actually chip in to really, uh, before data can be actually worked on, it, it has to be decided on what type of action that needs to be, to be taken. So the control buses are very much handy for such kind of things. All right, so now we got to now see if we can just make some progress. Now, of course, a microcontroller has a microcomputer. Now, I did give you a general understanding that a microcomputer would just have all these things in the one unit. Now, and I showed you right here that this CPU alone, which is a microprocessor structure, is actually external mapped to memory units like these ones. But if you come to the uh, microcomputer, they need to have all of this and all of these things under one chip. And so now we see here that a microcontroller right here is pretty much like a computer, like a microcomputer, right? And so what we are saying here is that now you do have the uh, program memory, for example, then the, the program memory, this is the read only memory and we have a detailed discussion of what this uh, read uh, memory read only memory is we've got the data memory and this is where we store data and we'll talk about all of this is and these are the some of the buses that i've been trying to talk about like the address bus the data buses and the internal control buses all right um and of course things to do with the clock king and all of that that may take place, of course, with the uh, the central processing unit, and we'll have a detailed discussion also of the, of the clocking. Now, here, right now, we also have the that the, these data buses, of course, we have the CPU right here as a microcontroller, I mean, sorry, as a microprocessor, and now we have various sort of uh, uh, buses, like the address bus, which could be linked to and from the memory unit. And we also have all of these things that could be, we have also the, the control, uh, sorry, the, the, the data buses that could be linked to the, uh, to the processing now um, uh, unit. And we also have the control buses, which could be linked appropriately as well. All right. Now, it's very much important for you guys to also note that in this case, as we talk about these things, and I want you to notice, now you can see that the data bus right here is bidirectional, right? 
as you can see, right? But the adverse bus is unidirectional, right? And the control buses could be also unidirectional. Now, data buses, why are they bidirectional? Well, data buses could be bidirectional because uh, we know that the data buses uh, will carry data to and from memory units and as well as peripherals. All right, but if you look at the uh, what we call the, for example, the unidirectional address bus, for these things we just need to locate which address in memory that we that, that the CPU would be interested to work on. All right, and then again also the control unit as well is just suffices from being just uh, a unidirectional because of course um, we know that all what is needed is to give an instruction whether there should be a read instruction from a peripheral or a read or write instruction from a data memory or a read or write instruction from the a program memory. That is all enough for the CPU, but the data buses really have to be working to and fro because sometimes information can be read from the CPU to the program memory or information can be read from the program memory or the data memory or the peripherals to the CPU and that could actually work out like that. Now so what are the differences between uh, a microprocessor and a microcontroller? So now this is the thing right, a microprocessor is a single chip or CPU right that's a fact. Now we know that microcontrollers contains a CPU and much of the remaining security of a complete microcomputer system in a single chip. All right, that's what we say. Now we can also that microcontrollers include the RAM, ROM, serial and power interfaces, timer, interrupt schedule security in addition to CPU in a single chip. Right. Now microprocessors, microprocessor instructions sets are processing intensive. Now we'll have a detailed discussion of this now. You see that microprocessor is just as important. Just like in a CP in a in a in a in your computer we have microprocessors that are running. And now we just need to understand that most of microprocessors what they do they have what we call processing intensive meaning that they imply powerful addressing modes with instructions catering to a large volume of data. So their instructions operate on nibbles. Now nibbles guys we have a detailed discussion because a nibble is just like four bits long and bytes these are eight bit long so my controls of instruction sets catering to the control of input and output ports many the instructions operate also on a single bit e.g. a motor to be turned on and off by uh, a one bit output okay so now this ends our microcontroller and microprocessor and I'd like to thank you for listening. Hmm. Did I start?